This video is all about fathering and uh, the possibility, the desire, the hope of maybe having spiritual fathers that could perhaps fill the gap from the lack of fathering that so many of us suffered through in this last generation. And uh, sadly in this generation too, as we look around us. I'm just wondering for you whether you've had a good fathering experience or whether you've sort of felt an emptiness and a, and a lack in that area. And if so, maybe this video will be helpful for you. I hope it will be. I had a good father growing up. I had a father who was, uh, you know, who stayed with my mum until death did they part some 10 or 15 years ago from prostate cancer. He was a good man. He was a man that uh, provided for the family. He came home nearly every night, but he was distant. He wasn't connected. I didn't feel the, the sense of fathering uh, from him. And in fact, most of the fathers from my generation were you know, quite distant and they weren't able to really, I think, relate. Uh, the, the, the parenting job was often left to the mother. And from what I can remember, most of my friends' fathers, they were kind of scary, not violent men, but certainly angry and not to be, uh, they weren't nurturing in any way. They didn't have a soft side. They were quite harsh men. And uh, to the point where I can remember being at friends' places and when dad was coming home, it was like, whoops, dad's home, let's go. And everyone would sort of bolt out the back door or there'd be a sort of sense of, whoops, dad's here, there's gonna be some trouble. And so I think we, many of us grew up with a fear of, of males and uh, we didn't really understand them and we couldn't kind of work them out. There was often a lot of drinking. My father had a drinking problem, not a bad one, but uh, he would often you know, stop at the pub before he came home pretty much every night after work, as most men did in Australia in those days throughout the 70s. But there, I guess there was just that sense of disconnect there. And uh, as a young boy growing up, I think I really, I didn't realise the impact and you may not have realised it on yourself either until you got into later life and had a look around and had a sense that there was just something missing. The role models, the, the people, the men in your life just didn't come through for you. They weren't there in any way, shape or form that really helped you to grow as a person. Sadly, in a worst case scenario, there's men that have been abusive, sexually abusive to their daughters, to their sons. Other men who have been physically abusive, angry, tired, fatigued men that have taken out their anger and their own fears upon their own children. You may have been one of those and it sucks, man. I'm so sorry that that's been the case. My father was none of those things. He was just kind of disconnected, I suppose. From my side of things and learning more about my father as I got older, I understood that he just didn't have the the tools, if you like, to connect with us boys. We had two boys and one girl in the family and my father didn't have the tools to connect with us. He didn't. He hadn't grown up with a father himself, basically was sent off to boarding school at, I think it was five years of age or something in uh, back in the United Kingdom. So most of his life, the only time he got to see his parents were during the holidays and they were busy, you know, sort of fairly wealthy uh, English people who were, you know, had a nanny, so they might bring him in at night time, wheel him in and here, have a kiss and good night, off he'd go. So obviously for my own father, he had no skills of how to parent. So I, I don't hold any grudge against my father, but I know that I've, I've suffered something uh, from the lack of fathering. So my heart in these days is to see people refathered. Like I'm, I'm a person that thrives on hope and positivity and my desire is that first we identify the problem and then we work through and we find solutions that can help us. It's no good just bemoaning or being victims of our past. Yes, there was bad fathering. Yes, fathers were abusive and violent, fearful men, men to be feared. And yet, what can we do about that? How can we make some difference here today? What I've noticed is, and particularly over the last 10 years, as I've sort of moved on, 57 now, I've noticed that there's many that are hungry for spiritual fathers. And let me just explain that for a moment. I see a spiritual father as someone who is a safe person, an older person who would be like a mentor or a guide or a coach or somebody that can stand by you that, are, that is interested in your life, but doesn't want to take anything from you. I think fathers growing up in our generation in particular, and I look around now, they're selfish, narcissistic men oftentimes that are taking from their children. I see a spiritual father as a giver, a servant, someone who loves 
and freely gives out without expecting anything in return. Because why? Because they've been given a desire to see fathering happen and, and they've noticed just how significant that is in their, in kids' lives right across the world. So I'm talking adults who need refathering. I'm talking children that need mentors and coaches and uh, people who are safe, teachers, uh, people that are safe, men in their lives that can show them what it means to be a man and to reframe, interesting you see the frame around me here, to reframe the masculine image. Sadly, the masculine image has been greatly marred and we've seen some real damage in that area. And I'm thinking and praying and hoping that more men will stand up and become spiritual mentors or spiritual fathers for those that are coming behind them. So for me, I talk with men and women across the world in different contexts, not lots of them, just half a dozen or so different people, up to 10, maybe 12. And I share with them and I listen to their stories and I love them and encourage them and I stand beside them and hope for them and dream with them, you know. And, and in a way, it, it feels to a lot of people like it's being refathered. It feels like a safe place. It feels like there's somebody in their life that cares about them. And it doesn't take much. It's just getting beside and actually listening maybe, using active listening skills to help to get beside and to care about someone else, to connect with them, to go out of your way, to grab them for a coffee and to say, how's it going, man? How are you going with your young family? What's happening for you guys? How can I be with you? You know, Is there anything I can do to help you out? Is there anything you need to talk about? Men don't seem to have that many friends and they don't have a safe older man that they can come to who's not going to judge them and criticise them. <coughs> but someone that's going to stand beside them and not be like their father, but be someone that's like, in a sense, the opposite, that can stand with them and encourage to be strong on their behalf, to, in a sense, you know, advocate for them should they need that, to, uh, to bring encouragement and hope to them when they're struggling, to let them know that what they're, what they're going through is normal. So many things come to us, like we struggle with, uh, you know, depression. We struggle with anxiety. We struggle with fears. Our marriages might get in trouble. You know, there's difficulties that we face from our past, from our own fathers. And when another male comes along who's safe, it helps us to understand on some level that all men are not bad. I think that's been the message, unfortunately, that's been put out there. Men are to be feared. Men are not to be trusted. A lot of people, that's their experience. And I, I totally understand that. Men in your life may have been violent, angry, abusive men. And I'm so sorry that that's the case. I really am. That is not how it was meant to be. It's not how it was um, God's you know, initial design, if you like. We've gone you know, way off the track and become selfish, narcissistic men who have been out taking our own fears out and passing it down from generation to generation. It's unhealthy. We need to maybe raise up a new generation of fathers, and I'm so happy to see my own boys being such loving fathers to their... Uh, my, both my boys have got two kids each, two little ones, and to watch them fathering their children is so encouraging just to see the love that they have very naturally for their kids. They connect with them, they cuddle them, they love them, they kiss them, they hug them, they play with them. And on a great, you know, on that level, they're just showing them that uh, it's safe. The world is a safe place to be. So I just wanted to share some of those thoughts with you today and maybe just prompt you to think about your own fathering experience, whether you're a father, whether you weren't fathered well, whether you're a woman that didn't have a father that is, you know, and it's really left a big hole in your heart. Maybe there's some others around you that are of safe places to download, to, you know, they don't want anything. Someone who doesn't want anything from you, that's a good spiritual father. Someone that can pass to you, mentor you, mentor you, love you without wanting anything from you. Not expecting you to perform on any level, but a place that you can be yourself and just trust again, to grow again and to be okay in the presence of another. What a beautiful thing that is. I hope it's been encouraging. I hope there's uh, maybe some food for thought in there for you. And uh, thanks for listening, guys. I'll catch you next time.